Gamer Dude 288 back again. And I've been having a problem, which is with the problem deck. And I just want to touch on some of the problems that I've came across with the problem deck. And as you can see, here's a layout of a problem deck and some of the cards that are in them. And the real issue is how to build a problem deck. Because a problem deck can be a problem for you if it's not constructed, right? And the easiest way to go about this is to say your problem deck should correlate with the way your draw deck is built. And what I mean by that is whatever strategy you're gearing your main deck to, your problem deck should go right along with it because each color does multiple things, especially since Canterlot Knights came out. There's been a few added extras into each color, but just just then what some of the colors do like blue is fast, you know, dash decks or anything that's running blue generally going to see the speed. But along with this, I'll take a look at some of my starting problems like cloud bursting your basic starting problem everyone kind of use a basic starting problem and the release of Premier and a few, along with a few other starting problems which certain colors use like yellow does with a thorn in his paws and purple with monitoring everything which these two were two kind of problems that you played against a opponent that had like a a quick flip for their main, maybe like rarity, something, something to slow down the opponent a bit. Which it still kind of works today with some of the other uh, some of the new mains, but mm, mostly to block out your opponent on your problem to get them to focus on their problem. Maybe you drop a troublemaker on their problem to slow them down even more. But that's kind of some of the basic strategy with problems. But also having such a big problem, if you don't have the requirements yourself, you kind of be locked out and you'll be playing on your opponent's problem for the longest. And your opponent can always, if they do play villains, drop a villain on their problem, forcing everything into your problem. And then you have a big problem on not being able to confront but that's just some of the issues within problems and starting problems. And along with starting problems, you ha have a few extras like looking for trouble and bottom of the well, which is one of the new ones. And I believe all of the colors have a new problem where it takes two of the color and two non-color with one on the bonus, which does some pretty interesting things. Uh, I see a lot of these problems being played mainly first. I usually have a tough decision between these two problems playing them because it all depends on what I do, what I do, and what, what I'm going up against because that's the main thing, learning what I'm going up against and what, what that deck does and what the opponent doing with that deck. And I like this one because I get an extra point for defeating a troublemaker. So it does work pretty good being that first problem played and I'm playing against someone that's dropping troublemakers, especially if they have troublemakers with two and three on the bonuses during like villains or something. But if they have something with like a two, I get I can get uh, that third extra point. And usually this would be one of the main reasons why I win the game later on just because I got that extra point off that troublemaker, which kind of make me want to well, that's another story, but anyway, move, moving on and to some of the other problems I have here. Since this is a blue-yellow deck, I'm playing a few yellow cards, and the number of each problem you play is a critical thing. You only have 10, 10 spaces for problems, so it becomes a problem in its own knowing what problem cards you want to play in the deck when there when there are so many so many good ones that you could play 
but the main thing I'm I, I'm doing with this deck is my speed consistency on my speed, which I think I like to change this card out. Maybe add in another one of these, this way little ones. I believe that's what that is. Yep, and just because I get to move my critter once this card is played. But I wish you could play more than just two because this card is so good. It's like, if I could play three of this card, I would. Just because I get to get that search. And search is always good no matter what kind of game you're playing. Uh, what kind of card game you're playing. If you can search for something, then you're in good shape. Because this this card does allow you to get something. Especially if it's... If it happens early, because sometimes you don't really go through that many problems in a game. And sometimes you will be going through problems like crazy. So really having certain problems is a is a must, especially if you're down or you're just exchanging back and forth with your opponent. This one is a uh, special one, too. It's a twister is a r real good problem. At first, I didn't like it. I guess before that's uh, before I realized how how to play it, it really helps because I have a lot of cards that that exhaust, and this helps me. I can just get what I need into play when I need uh, when I need it. Well, I can just get just ready the card that needs to be ready, and that that helps a lot. Us along with the new dash, the new dash main that allows you to ready. An exhausted friend when you're getting into a face-off, so that helps out a lot too. But this does does wonders, especially if I need just that one little extra power. If my opponent trying to do some, some something on their turn, and I don't have my main, this is a good card to have. I like to sit on it as long as I can, just because it's so good. That'd be another card I'd play at three in this deck, if I could. And just along with other other decks and other uh styles is like playing white you have you have your control where you're where you're stopping your opponent from moving as well as uh, being able to get additional points because that's what it does you get additional points and then also you are able to bring back cards from the discard pile which is a lot for a lot for white then yellow also being fast, like like blue, and then the critter apocalypse that I like to talk about all the time, because critters swarm like crazy when you're playing yellow. And then you can have so much power with yellow also. It's just the numbers bring about power, and that's always good in winning, winning face-offs, and they can set up pretty fast that way too. Then you have Orange being the powerhouse. Orange always having the powerhouse powerhouse plays and then being able to get those additional flips that Orange does and then they discard as well. So, which oh. does, a, does a lot in the game. Then you have Purple being able to get, get action tokens and also have a little, con, a little control which slowing down the, the opponent. Which is a big, which is a big thing, and guaranteeing your problems towards these different things is key to making your deck, your deck as good and as consistent as possible. Yeah, and then still have pink being able to just kill shit because that's what pink does, and at the same time, pink still has the ability to draw. Where draw is really not a big thing in this game since you can pay an action point to draw. But yet and still, I have yet to do it or seen anyone just build pink in a sense of playing more so of a supportive role rather than a main role, rather than a main role to just draw, just draw just to get whatever other plays that's going on because it can can do that. It is possible. And I want to try it out, test out to see how it is. I know it's more likely it's not as good as what pink, what people normally do with pink and that's kill shit. But yet and still, it is a thing. And that's just how I've been seeing the game, how I've perceived everything is and just knowing what to put into the problem deck is key. Because you can have that one game where you go through nearly all your problems and 
you run across that one problem that you like, man, maybe I should have put this in my problem deck because it did nothing for me. Or maybe you just run across a problem so many times to where it's like, why did I even put this in here? And then you run across a problem like, man, I should have put this at two because it was so good. Every time I run across this problem, it comes up and then I'm able to do something. And then you have your bonuses with your problems, which is also a big thing. Because sometimes you need that three bonus, which is hard to come by if you don't play enough uh, problems that has a three bonus. Which is like this deck really doesn't because it's not necessarily needed in this deck, but some decks you really wish you had that three bonus when you didn't okay. and run across, especially the worst problem to flip over when you need something big is to be the starting problem 1-1 one, one at the end of the game, especially if your opponent is so high that they can just confront problems easy. This would be the last one. You want them to spend as many action tokens as possible when they can probably only spend one, two, maybe four at the most just to confront this problem. And it's probably even less than that, depending on what they have in their hand and what's already in play. And then the tools are also good because it's like the mid the mid range of things you have you have your your three bonus which is your most which you would like to get the most points as you can possible but sometimes moving the game too fast especially if the opponent is not too far behind it it, it kind of hurts to run across that three win at the end and you can't win so maybe that two would have been better just to kind of push the envelope just a little bit where your opponent can't do nothing but you can add, you can ease your way to a victory and these are just some of the things I wanted to touch on with the problem deck. If I left anything out, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. And until the next discussion, Gamer Dude saying, see you later. And I got plenty more to talk about.